home, homes of their own, the desire and the wish of the American people. This program is one of the new series, Famous Homes of Famous Americans, prepared for your benefit by the Federal Housing Administration. These programs have been designed to give you a brief glimpse of the part home has played in the lives of our country's great men and women, the part home has played in the building of our nation. Our historic homes have contributed much to the high development attained by the American home of today. Perhaps through their story, you may receive inspiration and ideas for a home of your own, the home you have always wanted. The little toy dog is covered with dust, but sturdy and staunch she stands. The little toy soldier is red with rust, and his musket molds in his hand. The poet of childhood, Eugene Field. Probably there are no more famous verses in all the realm of children's poetry than these opening lines of Little Boy Blue. Field wrote from the heart, and his sincerity and insight into the lives of children won him a place in the hearts of all Americans. But there are other qualities in his character which marked him as a rare individual. His deep, humane interest in everyone he met, friends, acquaintances, mere chance contacts, made him a man of unusual sympathy. And this deep interest in others was balanced by a prankish, fun-loving disposition that made everyone love him. There was nothing he enjoyed more than a good practical joke, yet he was the first to sense misfortune in others. As on the day in Colorado, when he was a young journalist, enjoying an outing with the press club of Denver. At the hotel where they were stopping, he was approached by an old woman, poorly dressed, plainly troubled, who asked him for help. And since he died, Mr. Field, I ain't been able to find no work at all. I ain't got money to feed the kids, even. Well, I'm very sorry to hear that you've had a hard time. Let's see, maybe I've got a little spare. I... Oh, this wouldn't do you any good with all your troubles. Oh, anything would be a blessing, Mr. Field. Oh, we'll have to do better than that if we're to help you. Let's see now. I've got an idea. Say, Londoner. What's up, Eugene? We're going to give a gala show in the hotel tonight. Music and dramatics, all kinds of entertainment for the benefit of a deserving charity. Oh, you mean a benefit for me, Mr. Field? Certainly. We'll invite all the guests in the place and put on a bang-up show. Well, it's a noble idea, Eugene, but what are you going to do for talent? Who's going to take the part? What are they going to play? Who's going to furnish the music? The Lord will provide the entertainment if the town will furnish the audience. Yes, Never mind the butt. You line up the press club, boys. Tell them to go out and hustle. Drum up a big audience. The show starts at 8 o'clock. Well, I'll do my part, Eugene, and I know the boys will, but it's up to you to scare up the talent. audience was assembled. A big one, too, for the members of the press club had thoroughly publicized the affair. The buzz of excitement, however, gradually gave way to one of impatience, then annoyance, for no performance seemed to be forthcoming. Back of the impromptu curtain, Londoner came to inform Field that the audience was on the point of demanding its money back. Well, I don't want their money back. Well, they can't have it. It belongs to that old woman now. Eugene, I'm not questioning your objectives, but you said you'd get the performers if we got the audience. I couldn't find any talent, I tell you. There isn't any to be had. There's your audience. Now, what are you going to do? Make an apology? Certainly not. Up with the curtain. I'll put on the whole show myself. You'll what? That's what I said. Curtain! <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen... We have been unfortunate in meeting with unexpected reversals in our plans. We have no great names to present, but if you will bear with me, I shall do my best to entertain you in behalf of a little lady who badly needs assistance. Now, I'm not a pianist, but I know by ear many of your favorite melodies.
Thank you, thank you very much. And now, as a contrast to music, I shall offer you a recitation. And I hope you'll not mind my selecting one of my own poems. Seeing things. I ain't afeard of snakes or toads or worms or mice and things that girls are scared of. I think they're awful nice. I'm pretty brave, I guess. And yet I hate to go to bed. For when I'm tucked in warm and snug and when my prayers are said, Mother tells me happy dreams and takes away the light and leaves me lying all alone and seeing things at night. Sometimes they're as black as ink, and other times they're white. But the color ain't no difference when you see things at night. Lucky thing I ain't a girl or I'd be scared to death. Being I'm a boy, I duck my head and hold my breath. <laughs> Stories follow the recitation, some humorous, some touching. Seal sang Negro melodies, imitated famous people, gave dramatic readings. In fact, he put on alone a full entertainment that delighted his audience and sent them away with a hearty appreciation of his versatility. Eugene Field's most famous period is that during which he conducted his columns Sharps and Flats for a Chicago paper. One day, his daughter Trotty came to him and asked for an appropriate text to recite to her Sunday school teacher. Eugene taught her to say, The Lord will provide. My father can't. Field was not the one to allow the ordinary annoyances of life to affect his light-hearted attitude toward people and events. He satirized freely and wittily. His closest friends came in for their share of caricature. Everything in the life about him had a bearing on his work. And even tragedy was transformed in his hands. His grief was boundless when he lost his eldest son, Melvin. But his philosophy of optimism is apparent in the lines referring to Melvin, which he wrote in dedicating with trumpet and drum. So come, though I see not his dear little face And hear not his voice in this jubilant place I know he were happy to bid me enshrine his memory Deep in my heart with your play Ah me, but a love that is sweeter than mine holdeth my boy in its keeping today. And my heart, it is lonely. So little folk come, march in and make merry with trumpet and drum. All his life, Eugene Field had been looking forward to the day when he would be able to have a home of his own, a real home spacious enough for his family. And at last he found the place of his dreams out at Buena Park, then a suburb of Chicago. Sabine Farm, he named the place. It was just what he wanted. It was provided, as he put it, with all modern conveniences, including an ample porch and a genial mortgage. And here he spent the happiest years of his life. The Field family moved into the house even before the painters and carpenters were out. And then they set themselves to improving the appearance of the garden and planting the things they wanted to plant. Daddy, your popcorn is coming up in the garden. <laughs> really, Trotty? Well, let's go over and look at it right away. But the potatoes are what I'm most interested in. They haven't shown a thing. Oh, give them a chance, Daddy. A chance? They've had the best chance in the world. What do you say, Trotty? You and your mother dig one up. Oh, dig it up, Eugene. Well, then how can it grow? I just want to see how it's sprouting. <laughs> but if you dig it up, dear, it won't be able to sprout anymore. Now, you wait a minute. Uh, here's one. Now, look. Here's a little white sprout, Trotty, and, and here's one beginning to turn green. You see, that proves they're growing, Eugene. Now, suppose you leave the rest of them alone so they can grow the way they're intended to. <laughs> <laughs> All right, my dear. I've done my part. Now it's up to the Lord. There at his home, Eugene Field, surrounded by an adoring family, visited by friends, spent the last happy years of his life. He ventured away only for his lectures and his reading. He was in great demand at all sorts of functions and, as always, was generous, overly generous, with his time and energy. The reading of his poems to groups of children was one of his chief enjoyments. And even today, in readings of his verses by other people, his personality continues to go out to new generations of children who have been reared with the music of Eugene Field's poems in their ears. In Lincoln Park, Chicago, there stands a statue, a tribute to the poet of childhood. 
On a summer's afternoon, if you stroll by that statue, you may chance upon one of those unforgettable scenes. The picture of boys and girls gathered about, listening to the reading of their favorite poem, Little Boy Blue. Now, don't go till I come, he said, and don't you make any noise. So toddling up to his trundle bed, he dreamt of the pretty toys. And as he was dreaming, an angel song awakened our little boy blue. Oh, the years are many, the years are long, but the little toy friends are true. I faithful to little boy blue, they stand, each in the same old place. Awaiting the touch of a little hand, the smile of a little face. And they wonder, as waiting these long years through, in the dust of that little chair, what has become of our little boy Blue, since he kissed them and put them there. It is pleasing to think that the poet of childhood was able to realize one of his deepest desires and achieve a home for the children he loved so well. As he said in his own words, Sabine Farm possessed all the modern conveniences and the genial mortgage. How fortunate was Field in making such a mortgage? In Field's time and for a long time after, such a thing as a genial mortgage was indeed a rarity, something to be commented upon as Field so clearly shows it. Fortunately today, through the insured mortgage system of the Federal Housing Administration, genial mortgages are becoming the rule and not the exception. If you purchase a home through the insured mortgage system of the Federal Housing Administration, you too may have a genial mortgage. A mortgage that will be not a burden and a worry, but a constant encouragement as you travel the road to home ownership. A constant reminder that your home will be your home, free and clear, at the end of the mortgage period. A Federal Housing Administration insured mortgage is a single mortgage, running for 20 years or less, paid off in equal monthly amounts, including interest, a portion of the principal, taxes, hazard and fire insurance, a mortgage that means a home of your own. Ooh. 